Hello, everyone. We want to thank you for sharing a small portion of your afternoon with us as we remember those who we lost to gun violence here at home and around the nation. Wearing orange on this day has become a nationwide symbol after a friend of a 15-year-old girl was killed in Chicago and her friends wanted to honor her. Ever since then, this has become a symbol to on uh, this weekend and in the month of June where people can think about victims of gun violence and also think about the things that they should be doing to try to end senseless gun violence. Today we'll hear from a few people on how we can do our part as well as some of the things that we're doing in our city. Here to tell us about some of them is a man who has more than three decades of police experience. He's the Brockton Police Chief, John Crowley. John? Thank you, Dan. Made me sound pretty good there. Good afternoon. I'm here today to reaffirm the Brockton Police Department's commitment to stop gun violence in this city. The Brockton Police Department works daily with our state and federal law enforcement partners to take illegal guns off of our streets. This is an unwavering commitment that will continue until gun violence is eradicated within this city. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Chief. Now, there are a host of things that we can do to support the overall goal of ending gun violence. And we have people in organizations here in our state that are committed to doing just that. Many of us refuse to live in a society where mass shootings become normal, or any gun violence for that matter. We can speak out against these things and work to actively reduce it. Here to tell us about some of the things that are happening in the Commonwealth is the Executive Director of the Massachusetts Coalition to Prevent Gun Violence, Ruth Zacharin. Ruth? Good afternoon, everyone. Are you able to hear me? Yeah. OK. okay. <laughs> Again, my name is Ruth Zacharin. I am the new Executive Director of the Massachusetts Coalition to Prevent Gun Violence. I'm really thrilled to be here with all of you today. Prior to taking on this role, I spent 11 years doing domestic and sexual violence work right here in Brockton at Family and Community Resources. So this feels like a bit of a homecoming for me, so thank you for that. My connection to the issue of gun violence is through that work. Having sat with so many families whose lives have been touched by gun violence, in particular children who have lost a parent because of a domestic violence homicide, most often committed with a firearm, and that is what led me to become much more passionate about this issue and want to work with all of you to find creative solutions to end gun violence. The coalition has grown a great deal over the past four years since it was founded. We are now a um, combination of 80 different organizations from throughout the Commonwealth working together to find creative solutions to end the issue of gun violence in our communities. If you are interested in learning more about the work of the coalition, please do come and find me. I would be happy to talk your ear off about the many things that we are involved with. I'm also interested in hearing from all of you about your connection to the issue of gun violence, how it plays out here in the city of Brockton. We are very lucky to have the ear of many state legislators and decision makers. And we would really like to be able to reflect the experiences of folks who are most affected by this issue. We are working together to coordinate efforts, to mobilize communities, and to raise awareness. Because when we all work together, we can find solutions to prevent gun violence, because gun violence is, in fact, preventable. And I think no matter how you feel about the issue of guns or the Second Amendment, there are certain things that we can all agree on. And one is that children deserve to feel safe. They deserve to feel safe in their schools. They deserve to feel safe when they are walking to school through their neighborhoods. And they deserve to feel safe going out to play after school. And if you are interested in working with us at the coalition to figure out how to make that happen, I would be very happy to speak with you. And again, I want to thank all of you for being here with us today, and thank you for being invited to participate.
Thank you, Ruth. Now, creating and supporting common sense gun safety laws is something that our local state senator on Beacon Hill has worked with, with his colleagues on for a long time. But he's also comforted, unfortunately, many families who have lost loved ones to gun violence. Please join me in, in welcoming our state senator, Michael Brady. Mike. Thank you, Darren. And um, on behalf of the state delegation, I know Representative Claire Cronin, Representative Michelle Dubois, and Representative Gerald Cassidy, Jerry Cassidy has other commitments, but they are working together as a team in the Commonwealth on your behalf with the governor's office, with our local city officials, our mayor and our city council, and our local police departments locally and at the state level. We have passed very serious initiatives to stop and end gun violence in the Commonwealth and it's common sense legislation. We don't want to hurt the law-abiding citizens who want to use their guns for hunting and so forth and who are law-abiding citizens, but we are big supporters of the Shannon Grant that has helped the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, helped the City of Brockton, the Safe Neighbor Initiative, working with our federal authorities as well to pass common sense legislation. And another big initiative is the mental health initiatives because a lot of this violence has been caused by people with mental health or addiction issues and you see it time and time and time again and it's got to stop so we have committed to put more funding into mental health issues addressing the mental health issues and also the addiction issues and we will continue to support that and we work as a good team in the commonwealth of massachusetts at the local the state and with our federal delegation so i'm honored to be here i'm supporting you on behalf of the state delegation and i will continue to support these initiatives and my door is always open in the state house and i thank the groups that are here today to support this initiative. It's very, very important. We heard time and time again in schools all across the country, on the streets of not only the city of Brockton and the rest of the Commonwealth, and it doesn't matter if you come from wealthy, affluent communities or the less fortunate communities, we're all on the same page with us. So thank you for your support, and we will continue to support you at the state level. Thank you. As we wear orange today to remember the victims and show solidarity with survivors. It's also a chance for us to meet and support survivors, like a mother who lost her teen son through gun violence in Brockton four years ago. We get strength from people like her, a mother who wants her son's life remembered, along with all victims. Shannon Tangelini is here to tell us about a project she's been working on with Mayor Bill Carpenter's help and countless others, others who belong to a group called Surviving Homicides Aftermath, Resources, Education, and Support. Their project will soon surface right here on City Hall Plaza. And with that, please give a warm welcome to Shannon Tangelini. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for all coming out. Excuse me if I get a little broken up. I'm not really great at speaking in front of everyone. But I'm not, in, I'm not educated on this matter. I can only speak to you from my own experience and my personal thoughts. My life was forever changed on October 5th, 2015 at 5, 10 p.m. when I received a phone call from Brockton Hospital stating that my son was in critical condition. When my husband and I approached the ER, we were taken into a room where we were told that they were doing everything possible to keep my son alive. I never expected to hear that my son was shot, that he would later be a victim of homicide. My son did not survive surgery and passed that same evening at 647. The next day, my husband and I had to go to the medical examiner's office in Boston to identify my son. The very next day, I was approached with questions such as, what are your plans? What funeral parlor should we contact? Not only was I numb due to my situation, I was not prepared mentally or financially to bury my son. I did not know how to answer these questions. Danielle Bettett from the city of Brockton, also an employer from the Lewis D. Brown Institute, reached out to me. She and Tina Sherry from the Peace Institute guided me with love and support for those following days, and they continue to lend support till today. No family should ever have to go through what my family have gone through. 
That's why this National Gun Violence Awareness Day is so important. We need to try and spread awareness of gun violence. There are way too many lives being taken due to gun violence. Awareness needs to be started even at a young age with children playing video games that are violent, even more so in the schools. Most recently, two weeks ago, my youngest son, who's in middle school here in Brockton, had someone come to speak as an assembly from Sandy Hook. A teacher from the school had contacted me prior to this and asked, do you think it's okay for Alex to continue? Would you like to dismiss him? They had Alex call me and I asked what his thoughts were and he said, Mom, I'm really happy that they're having this because we don't feel safe in our schools and I want to know how the school is going to protect us. And that's heartbreaking because children should feel safe going to their schools. There needs to be severe consequences of possession of firearms and that's what the law needs to consider and all judges should be on the same page. I think I can say on behalf of myself and everyone here that together we should share the heartache and consequences of what gun violence can do. We can continue this fight for all of us for a future to be free of gun violence. That's not my quote, I swear that and I just liked it. <laughs> to that end, I'd like to share some upcoming events that's going to be coming up. I am part of a group called SHARES. This group is run by Karen Fabrizio and Bill McCoy, which are out here in the audience. They are my advocates, they are my rocks. So back some time ago, the group had mentioned that the Lewis D. Brown Peace Institute was preparing to present grants to families of homicide. We got together and we all agreed that it would be nice to have to apply for this grant for our group, something that can be done for all of our loved ones. I applied for the group for the grant and I'm happy to say that we are one of the first grantees to receive this grant. With the love and support from Mayor Bill Carpenter, Tim Carpenter, Park Superintendent and the Parks Commission, we were given support and approval to build a memorial site which will be placed here in City Hall Plaza, right to my left, a spot in the second island here. This will be taking place sometime this summer. This memorial site will be a dedication to all lives taken by homicide. Our loved ones' lives mattered and I think it's important for people to acknowledge that they can walk by this memorial site and take a little breather and realize our, this gun violence has to stop. There's no need for a memorial site, but unfortunately, this is going to continue until gun violence can be eradicated. Thank you. God bless you, Shannon. And thank you for those heartfelt words. Now, we should never forget the victims or the families of victims. And if you ride by City Hall tonight, you will see the building will be illuminated in orange. And yes, it's a symbol to remember the victims, but it's also a reminder that we have a lot of work left to do when it comes to helping to end gun violence. At this time, I'd like to bring up uh, Mayor Bill Carpenter's Chief of Staff, Nick Giaquinto, who has a proclamation from the mayor. First off, I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. Um, unfortunately, the mayor couldn't be here, but I know if you were here today, um, you'd learn very quickly that he's very passionate about ending gun violence here in the city. And uh, to say we're committed is an understatement to ending gun violence here. And I think if you follow us and know what we're all about, we're doing everything we can to eradicate gun violence and um, we're making progress. So um, with that, um, I want to thank Shannon for her remarks. Um, where they are. Um, I look forward to having the, the, the memorial out here in the summertime, but that's a project that we worked on with the mayor, Mr. Bill McCoy and Shannon, um, and it's a great project. So um, you'll be hearing from us about that when we're ready to uh, construct it and put it out there. So uh, on behalf of the mayor and the city of Brockton, I'd just like to read and issue this proclamation declaring the first Friday in June to be National Gun Violence Awareness Day in the city, um, in honor to remember all victims and survivors of gun violence. 
It reads, whereas every day 100 Americans are killed by gun violence, and on average there are nearly 13,000 gun homicides every year, and whereas Americans are 25 times more likely to be killed with guns than people in other high-income countries, and whereas protecting public safety in the communities they serve is a mayor's highest responsibility, and whereas support for the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens goes hand in hand with keeping guns away from people with dangerous histories. And whereas mayors and law enforcement officers know their communities best, are the most familiar with local criminal activity and how to address it, and are best positioned to understand how to keep their citizens safe. And whereas to help honor Americans whose lives are cut short and the countless survivors who are injured by shootings every day, a national coalition of organizations has designated June 7, 2019, the first Friday in June, as the fifth National Gun Violence Awareness Day. Whereas anyone can join this campaign by pledging to wear orange on June 7th, the first Friday in June 2019, to help raise awareness about gun violence. And now, therefore, be it resolved that Mayor Carpenter of the City of Brockton declares the first Friday in June, June 7th, 2019, to be National Gun Violence Awareness Day. Now, we're encouraging all citizens to support their local community's efforts to prevent the tragic events of gun violence and honor and value human lives. And I'd like to present this today with, uh, Shannon, to Shannon Tangelini. She's going to do photo. Do photo real quick. Yes, Thank you. Photo. Photo. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. This just about concludes our program, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't thank Kathleen Berry from uh, Moms Demand Action for helping coordinate this event today and all of the volunteers who came out to help us set up and make this happen. So thank you Kathleen. Uh, and I also want to thank uh, Montilio's Bakery for donating the cake and cupcakes we have on the side. Before you leave today, please be sure to stop over there and have a quick bite. So they are orange. Um, with that, uh, that's the conclusion of our program. I want to thank everyone again for coming out and um, have a good day. Thank you everyone.